Michael practiced so hard that the games were easy. Winning doesn't want you to follow, it wants you to lead. It wants you to lead. What does that mean for you? Like, what does it mean to be relentless? Sean, how many people do you know out there are living somebody else's life? A lot, a lot. All right, so at some point, I always say this, things happen, you know, we all have struggles. You know, you never know what the next individual is going through is through everybody in life is going through something that you know nothing about you know nothing you know nothing of you know nothing about so usually when that happens is somebody else comes in and they snatch your identity either you gave it to that person or somebody took it so now you start to live their life they set up real estate in your head they got you thinking the way you want the, uh, the way they want you thinking you need to go back and take your identity back from that you take that back from that individual or the person the individual either took it or you gave it to them. once you realize who you really are and that's the whole premise is about relentless and we talked about this relentless doesn't tell you what to do it gives you permission to be who you really are we're all born to be competitive none of us are born here just to be average all right we all have the ability to do more we have the ab ability to get to the level that we that we want you know physically we all have limitations but the mind is it, it's limitless the knowledge that you can obtain and that you have access to to become that individual that you you're meant to be on this you're meant to be on this planet but then you start living somebody else's you start to live the way somebody else uh, lives because you, you start you learn you figure out and you stop dealing with adversity and you stop dealing with things that are going to come at you because you're out there you're always you're always looking for happiness how many people are out there always look you know if i lost 10 more pounds I, I i would be happier you know if i was in a better relationship i would be i would be happier if i had more money i would be happier well you know what you can have all those things but instead of having somebody else do that you know you don't go out and find happiness you create it and how do you create it? You be created by becoming the person that you are meant to be. Mm. That's how you. That's how you don't find happiness. You create happiness, and once you can create that happiness, then you start feeling better about yourself. The weight starts coming off. Your mind starts to become more clear. You're able to deal. You're able to deal with more uh, adversity. You know, you have individuals all the time that come up to you when something doesn't go right. What do they do? They put their arm around you and say. It's going to be okay. That's all you got. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you no. That it's 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 not going to be okay unless you make it okay. Yeah. All right. And first, and if somebody just says okay, we're not put on this on this earth for things just to be okay. There's too many people out there that are already settling for okay and average. Yeah. You know, that's not what we're, that's not what we're put on this planet for. Everybody on this planet has the ability to do something special and it's special to what to you you know you have individuals here that run that are really into you know different kind of charitable events you have people that run unbelie unbelievable you know uh, pet rescues or whatever 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 it is whatever is unique whatever is unique to you all right those aren't not financially aren't you know super rewarding but that's the identity of the person. Right. That's what's unique to those. You know, they are living their life of how they want to live. What that somebody else hasn't, uh, somebody else wants them to be. Right, man. I thought that was so powerful because you know, especially during this time where we can get so many. My my mother in law calls them borrowed desires. Mm -hmm. Right. Especially with social media today. Like if I had that thing when it wasn't even on your radar before. And you, you stop listening to that inner guidance system about who you really are and what really makes you happy and brings you fulfillment. It might not be making you know six or seven or eight figures. It might be, like you just mentioned, running a nonprofit or uh, doing something and getting that fulfillment from something else. But we have this really misconstrued idea that if I get that thing that everybody else has, then I'll be happy. And like you said, that's like folks taking up real estate in our own minds. So it's nuts. Yeah, and it's just thinking, you know, from what you just said, if you, 
we all have instincts. And if you just listen to your instincts, oh, most yeah. of the time they're going to point you in the right, you know, point you in the right direction. If you just think about how, how simple it is it when you're driving, you know, and you'd be like, you know what? Yeah, I, you know, this location's on the right, but no, you know, I'm going to turn left. And you go, yeah. I should have listened. I should have listened oh, to my answer. You should have listened. You listen to your gut. And, you know, when we talk about closers and cleaners, all right, you know, a closer, a closer, you know, trusts his instincts. Okay. A cleaner's instincts trust them. Mm. Mm. No. And, and there's these, there's these little levels mm. of these, what these 1% can do. But we all have the we all have the ability. We all have instincts. You you already know things. A lot of decisions you make in life, a lot of things you do, you already know what the consequences and outcome is going to be. But you still do it anyway. Right. Okay. You still you still you still do it anyway. Man, this is so powerful because I'm I'm a very analytical person, and. You know, I'm a scientist, so I'm always looking for the, the data, the proof. How can we replicate something? Right. And some things, and this is also what I really wanted to meld into my show and why I do what I do is there's some things that we can't explain. And it's beautiful. It is. Part of that is our instincts. Like we don't have tangible proof of that knowing, but we all experience it. And so when you wrote in the book about trusting animal instincts, I'm like, but what do, what do you say when people say, well, we're not animals? Like because a bird just within a matter of a certain amount of time, it's gonna be able to fly. Uh, that baby deer, when it comes out, it better get up and walk. Yes. Or that's, you know, the instincts are there. We're a part of that kingdom. Yes, we we are. have some phenomenal instincts, mm -hmm. but we allow, again, folks taking up real estate in our, in our minds, also uh, faulty beliefs about reality, taking mm -hmm. up real estate, and we stop listening to our instincts. Yeah. I get on myself about it now, yeah. because every time I listen, without fail, something good happens. You know, it might be the, let me not say every time, it might be those little random whatever, but if I look sometimes, you know, it might be something that I do in business or it might be something in working with somebody. When I listen to my instincts, it might not seem like it turned out the way that I expected, but there's always a gift in it. Yes, and, and I've written programs, I've sat, just like you, I've sat down for weeks or months putting this elaborate training program for an individual, analyzing all the movement patterns, seeing what's going on, got all the health reports, and I get five minutes into a training program and I'm just like, this ain't gonna work. Yeah. Just like, it ain't gonna work. It looks great on paper. Everything like, I got it, I got it down. And the minute the athlete does one move, I say, throw it out, yeah. start all that over. That takes courage to do that. It does, it, it, it does, and listen, we're all, we all, we already know instead of like trying to force something in there and just going to we're, we're gonna, I, I, I'm going to make this work I'm going to make this work I'm going to make because I know the numbers are this way it, it ju it's just not it's just with some, some individuals you have to have the courage to say I'm going in a different direction I'm still going to get that end result but I'm going in a different I'm going in a different direction mm -hmm. you know when you started that when you first started you know doing these podcasts and everything you're doing how many different times did you have to change things up and you're constantly still evolving all right like i said you're still chasing that you can go back to everything that you've done and you can sit there and every single podcast that you've done and all the followers that you have and everything you can't say that i've had a perfect one because if you watch something you'll be like that was off i should have asked that question i should have done that and that's those are your instincts that allow you to be better and better each time over and over and over again. Yeah. And, and oh man, it's just, it really makes me hungry for it, you know, just even thinking about it. And I think there's a lot of questions that come up for folks when they read a book like yours, like, you know, where do I fit in this spectrum? And I think that there's, because even as you're speaking, like I'm really, really excited and hungry to get better. You know, and at some, you know, looking from the outside in, you might think, oh, this, there's a pinnacle, like you've reached, but it's not, you there, know, there's, there's always more. There's always more. You just, you look at your most competitive individuals, you know, um, Kobe went from retiring 20 years of basketball. Now he's, be, now he's become relentless and is cleaner in the, in the bit, in the business world. You know, Michael went from playing his 15 years, then, you know, he's 
ownership of a team running the most uh, successful shoe brand company I got out them on right yeah, now. Yeah, I noticed I noticed <laughs> when it first came, first came in. You know, you have or let's take, you know, Jeff Bezos. Everybody knows who that is. It's the mm. gentleman that, you know, that Amazon when he first got when he first got in, you know, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to deliver packages to people's homes in 2 weeks. And if he was satisfied, he'd have been out of business. Then he came up and said, you know what? I'm going to do it in a week. Then I'm going to do it in two days. Hmm. Now I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to have these little things flying over people's houses and dropping packages off on the same day. You know what? That's not even good enough. I'm going to have it so you can have it in an hour. You know, yeah. it's, it's always trying to figure out how to, knowing there's going to be bumps in the road yeah. and once there are bumps in the road you know you're on the right road and constantly figure out a way to do things a little bit better a little bit more a, a little bit more efficient a little bit more efficiently not afraid to try not afraid to try through new things not afraid to be embarrassed if things don't work out there's not a single individual on this planet that's had 100 success success at everything that they, they've done just having you, you look at all these individuals they've had some massive failures massive in your book you write my goal is to make it so challenging in the gym that everything that happens outside the gym seems easy what did you mean by that there was something I actually learned from Michael Michael practiced so hard that the games were easy he practiced so hard, and it was funny. There wasn't a very few practices that Michael and Scotty ever play on the same team, because Michael knew Scotty was the one guy, because top defensive player law, that he would challenge him every single day. So it's you know it's being prepared for no matter what is going to be thrown at you not only physically but mentally so you put in the time you put in the effort you've put in the research you know go back to when and this is a great lesson for the kids but even you know we had this stuff when we went uh, when we were in when we were in school you had a test you studied for the test you'd go to school you'd be like no problem do you know maybe a little nervous you go in mm. you got a test you didn't study Man, I hope it. Hope we get a snow day. Well, out in San Diego, you're not going to get a snow day, but we're from where both yeah, you and I are from, yeah. the Midwest. Man, I hope we have a substitute teacher. <laughs> you know, Something. I hope there's a fire alarm that day. You weren't prepared. You weren't. If you weren't prepared, you have to be so well prepared that it makes everything else easy. Go back to the fit. Go to back to the fitness thing, and you know, people always say that, you know. Working out is uncomfortable. Working out is supposed to be uncomfortable, right? But how uncomfortable is it with type 2 di uh, diabetes? How uncomfortable is it carrying an extra 50 pounds, not only on your heart and on your joint? How, comfortable I uh, how uncomfortable is it with high cholesterol? How, comfortable, how uncomfortable is it having achy joints? If you really go back and think about it, all right, and you you know you know this better than I do. How many things, both physically and mentally, could you just alleviate by exercising, by eating better, and getting the proper amount of proper amount of sleep? All right. So when you know when it's you the root of almost everything. Right. <laughs> so and that but that but that's what I'm talking about being so well prepared. Those individuals that are so well prepared, you don't think so <laughs> they take their workout seriously. Your your most successful entrepreneurs in business, majority of them have a very strict regimen of exercising. It's part of their protocol. Yeah. You can, you can look at you can you can look it up. All right. They eat well. All right. And they get the proper amount. They get the proper amount of rest. You know, everyone talks to me. Yeah, they all say, "Oh man, I work eighteen. I I work eighteen hours a day." Yeah, just be. Listen, just because you put in long hours and hard work, that doesn't guarantee success. It's what are you putting the long hours in, and knowing when to say, "Hey, listen, you, you have an individual. You can be effective for a certain amount of time. Yeah, you might be able to do 
two days in a row where you've done 18 hours. But then when after that, is, is your mind really functioning? Is your right. body really functioning at an optimal level? You, ha you have to recover. You know, Kobe used to, <laughs> everybody thinks Kobe Bryant, you, you should just take a thousand shots. At, uh, you know, I took a thousand shots. He didn't take a thousand shots every day. Well, he understood that some days, this is what I'm gonna do, the next days uh, I'm, I'm here. These are the individuals, but they always listen. That, you know, you get the one thing, and we talked about this earl well, talked about this earlier. How do things become easier? How do things become easier is when you start to listen to individuals that have expertise in other fields, and you put that in action. My first professional client was Michael Jordan. All right, he knew I was never going to play. I've never scored a single point in an NBA game. Now, I've scored a basket in every NBA arena when it's empty. I've taken the <laughs> shots up. <laughs> but he knew this individual has an expertise in something that can benefit him. Yeah. And he was willing to listen. And when you're willing to listen, you're willing to adapt, you're willing to overcome, things become easier. They become easier when you expect them, when you stop expecting them to become easier. Awesome. Awesome. I'm starting to really hear that listening is a superpower and paying attention is a superpower. These are the things that you were doing early on. And now to hear this from, you know, again, people that we see as literally legends, the greatest to ever do it, they listened, you know, have an audacity when you're as great as you are to actually listen. And I think it's just this kind of internal fire again to just want to get better and to do it whatever it takes to get better. But asking I mean, this question. I'm stop oh, you right ahead. there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's an easy thing, all right. If you believe in, if you believe in the way in a higher power or an individual, however, however we were created, all right. How many ears do you have? We got two. How many mouths do you have? One. Listen twice as much as you talk. Simple enough. Simple as enough. Well, I I found recently, and I've been just, again just paying attention. You know what's so funny? I don't know if I've ever shared this on the show before, but. You know, I grew up, I, I was in different environments, you know, and I, I tended to be, I tended to not fit in, you know, because of my, you know, my, my background and being biracial in one community, um, I was in the minority and then I go to the complete opposite. And so when people, again, are asking like, well, how did you get to this place? You know, how, what was your, your path to success? I just sat back and listened, I was very quiet but that doesn't mean that I wasn't engaged. I was paying attention to what was going on around me. And I love this quote that God doesn't call the qualified, God qualifies the called. And so I kind of feel like my life was qualifying me for what I am doing today. Mm. And it was those moments where I might think that there was a disadvantage to not fit in, but I was just sitting back and I was listening. I was paying attention. I was paying attention to people's mannerisms. I was paying attention to how people are moving and talking and, and relating to each other and just taking mental notes. And it wasn't like super conscious, but it's just because I was listening. And it might have even been a result of fear. And this is something else you talk about. We're going to have fears. They're going to be there. You're going to feel nervous. But I think you mentioned to Michael one time because he talks about even him being nervous before big games and you mentioned something about getting the butterflies moving in one direction. Yeah, it's funny, you know, everyone says, man, I, you know, and being nervous is a part of life, all right? It, it, it happens, it's something that, you know, it's it's an instinctive thing, so a lot of people can't control it. They say, man, I always have this thing, you know, man, I got butterflies in this, my stomach. Mm -hmm. I said, that's great, you got butterflies, so make sure they're all going in the same direction. That's right. You know, you control which way you want the butterflies to go. It's just like your thought process. If you if you got thoughts in here and you got them bouncing around all over the place, you don't have clarity up here. You don't have clarity. All right. You you have to get whatever direction you choose to go in. All right. You have to have clarity about that. You have to have clarity about that direction. And once you have clarity about that direction and the and from a physical standpoint and from a um, mental standpoint you know people always say i want to move forward yeah okay if you move great you want to move forward but you want to move forward and upward you just don't want to move forward all right if you're only moving forward you're following the pack the the, the idea is to get away from the pack the idea is to separate yourself from individuals the idea is to separate yourself from the pack the more you the better you do 
for yourself. And and this is where society is a little bit off. I disagree with this. You know, everyone always says you need to help other individuals. You need to be available for this. I agree with that 100%, but not at the stake of not taking care of yourself. Because if you can take care of yourself, that allows you to do more for yourself and allows you to do more for others. Mm-hmm. But if you if you don't take care of yourself, you can't do you can't do more for others. So yeah. you know you got sometimes you ha- in order to give more, you got to be you have to be a little bit more selfish. Mm-hmm. And if you become a little bit more selfish in the right way, all right, you can do more for yourself, which will allow you to do more for which allows you to do more for individuals. The so people that are always telling you you know you're selfish, you're selfish. Those are the individuals that you're constantly doing stuff for, <laughs> and that are taking away, taking up your time, yeah. right? And they have to understand. Listen, I need time for myself. Just like you know, when you you don't reach the subscribers and the status you where you're at, you know, in this business unless you have time to work on yourself, unless you have time to work on your craft. And the more time you've had to work on yourself, the more time you've had a chance to work on your craft, the more knowledge and information you've been able to help other individuals. Otherwise, this thing could be, you could be talking about the same topic that hundreds of fitness people talk about every single day. It's the same thing over and over and over again. You've taken it and you've gone in a direction that's very difficult for people to go in because it requires you to research and put in the time. And the thing I said, it requires you to put in that time and that time and effort. And a lot of people forget how important you is. Right. Oh, man, man. That's a mic drop right there. That's (laughs) man. That's so real. You know, um, again, there's so many things I want to ask you about, but having having this in front of us this opportunity to get better to improve we're also going to fail and all of these incredible athletes that you've worked with over the years they failed numerous times but they don't see failure in the same way that the average person does so can you talk a little bit about that what you've seen consistently with them failure is a failure is a learning failure is a learning pro failure is a learning process all right it's never failure it's only failure if you don't learn from it if you learn from it, it's not. I don't. You can never consider it failure. All right. So that's how. You, that's how you got to kind of look. You got to kind of look at it. Uh, these individuals that everybody's going to fail it. So you're not going to hit every game when it, you're not going to hit every game when it's shot. You're not going to throw the perfect. Uh, you're not going to throw the perfect pass for the touchdown every every single time. But are you willing to learn from that process? You know, I, I people always say, I love how this. Uh, they they say this all the time. You know, you learn more from losing than you do from winning. Hmm. The your top of the top people learn just as much from winning as they do from losing. They, it's a constant learning process. Mm-hmm. And if you have a constant learning process, are you really failing? Okay, you only fail when the learning process stops. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a big thing about, <laughs> especially you have kids now. You know, yeah. how old are your boys? Uh, one is eighteen, and the other is seven. All right, they know it all. Absolutely not. not <laughs> okay. <even close. laughs> All right. But it's funny. The learning process starts when you realize you think you know it all. Yeah. All right. And dangerous. that's 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 a dangerous part. So failure is all you decide if you failed at at you failed at something. All right. That's your decision to that's your decision. And if you decide you failed at something, you figure out a different way to get that end result. But as long as you continue to constantly learn and don't let that failure beat you up. You know, there's people that are constantly it's something that they failed at way many, many years ago and, and they, they, they just it, it's kind of just continues to eat at them over and over and over again. Well, you need either you, you're never going to forget about it. But you can't constantly think about it. You know, the greats, the greats, they, they, they remember their failures. You know, they, they could tell you to the detail. You know, you talk right. to your greatest entrepreneurs. You right. tell them, they'll tell you every business idea that didn't work well, every stock that they bought that didn't, that didn't go. And what do they do? They just, they use it as a learning thing and they laugh at it. Did they forget about it? No. But they don't constantly think about it. People that don't know how to use failure, they're constantly thinking thinking about that fi- that failure moment yeah. and when you're constantly thinking about the failure moment you're not in the moment your greatest athletes 
and your greatest business people, and I say this all the time, thinking to them is a distraction. Because if you're thinking, you're not in the moment. You're In order to be in that 1%, or not even that 1%, that mm-hmm. 0.001%, the zone is not about thinking. The zone is about clarity. It's about being able to let your instincts do everything that they're meant to do. It's not thinking about, it's not thinking about the failures. It's you're in the moment. How many times can you talk to an individual that they can tell you, I'm in the moment? Not many. Not today. Yeah, not today. Not with all the distractions. This all ties back to what we talked about earlier. It's with the distractions. You get distracted so easily, you're never, you're never in the moment. And I'm not talking about just, I'm just talking, not talking about, you know, work. I'm talking about when you're with your family, when you're with your yeah. kids, when you, you know, whatever you're doing, be in that moment. Because if you're not in that moment, you're going to miss that moment. And sometimes you don't get that missed opportunity or that missed moment back. That's a failure. When I trained all my athletes, the first thing we always concentrated on, let's build the strongest foundation. You can have the most beautiful house there is. All right. You can have all the nice stuff. You can have all this stuff. You can have all these things going on in here. The best looking furniture, all the crystal, the diamonds and all that other stuff. If that foundation isn't built... And what are your principles built on? Your principles are, your foundations are built on your principles. That's it. Those things have to be rock solid. That's why in both of my books, when I listed my 13 traits, I always list them as number one. I list all 13 as number one. You have to decide which, how you want to put them. Now, they're as equally as important. They're as equally as important. You can't say, hey, I'm only going to do this one. I'm only. It's just like people will be like, you, you, you give them a, a, a health plan says, well, I only want to do this Monday through Friday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want to do this on Saturday. I don't want to do this on Saturday or Sunday. All right. That's not a foundation. That's not, that's not a principle. They're all equally as important. You decide what order you want to put them in. That's unique to you, what you said in the individuality of, the, of that individual. What principles one person has, somebody else's principles may be different. No one's right, no one's wrong. But those have to be your, your principles. And most of them have to be non-negotiable. Yeah. yeah. One of the most powerful sentences in the entire book, and I've got it right here, winning the new book out. When this is coming out, it's just released, so make sure to pick up a copy. But one of the most powerful sentences in the entire book for me is when you said, there's nothing normal about winning. Absolutely nothing. I had to put the book down and sit there for a second because you said something that's just like in my awareness, but I never put words to it. Think about about it. There's nothing. Any winner that you know that successfully won over and over and over again, are they really normal? They're all a little off. <laughs> they're all they're all a little. So when everybody says, "Man, you know, he, he or she is crazy," they're a little bit off. I don't understand the way they think. Everybody think that's a bad thing. That's a prerequisite to winning. So when people call me crazy, I'm like, I always say, "Thank you very much," because right. you know what crazy means. That means I have the ability to see things that other people don't. Everybody that's done something extraordinary in the world, you know, whether they've changed the world, I don't, whether they've come up with a new educational principle, whatever, whatever it may be, architecture or so forth. Somebody said, man, that idea is crazy. Yeah. I said, this dude is like, this dude or this, this girl is like, yeah, they don't know what they're talking about. This world is built on crazy. There's how many people told you when you were just like, hey, I'm going to do this show on health and wellness and tell the truth about it. And people are like, so why do you want to do that? No one's going to listen to you. You got to be crazy to do that. You know, they couldn't see. They couldn't see. Actually, let me change that. They did see. They didn't have your vision. Mm. There's, a huge, there's a huge difference. And everybody that's a little crazy, when you talk about winning isn't normal, winning is not normal. You have to be a little bit off. I always say this, all right? 
And I also ha have this in the, in the book. All right. Winning makes you different and different scares people. It really, really does. It really does. All right. It's easy to fit in. It's easy to look at everybody and fit in that pack and so forth. But once you start to win, in whatever you want to win, and you want to win at your health, you want to win at your business, you want to win at your raising your kids, all right, it makes you different. And people are scared of different. They're like, well, why are you raising your kids that way? Why are you only eating this? Why are you only doing that? What are you doing? Why, your son? Why does he need all that muscle? All right? Different scares people. But your definition of winning, my definition of winning, his definition of winning is different. Right. It is different. There's nothing normal about winning. Winning doesn't want you to follow. It wants you to lead. It wants you to lead. Yeah, yeah. So I think a big component of why folks, like you just said, it's not normal, it scares people, it brings up that F word, fear. It does and bring up fear. We, we've got to talk about this. And so especially, you know, we have a certain template based on, again, how we're raised, our experiences, our mindset, our sense of empowerment. And so for my wife, for example, it's a, it's a subconscious or unconscious feeling of, again, like you're going to leave the pack. You're going to stretch us. Like, what if it, you are number one? What kind of attention does that bring? How does that change the dynamics? There's so many uncertain things. But within that, and I want to talk about this, if we're talking about in the concept of folks who are winners, winning at, and there's many different definitions of what that sure. is. But I want to ask you this, because I think that we might think that the person who's doing the thing, who's out there working towards their victory, doesn't have fear. But oh, that's, not, that's not the case. That is, is not the case at all. They have more fear than anybody else. I, and I talk about this book, I talk about this in winning also. I've talked to every person I've ever coached, from the business to the athletes, whoever it is. So do you have fear? I have fear all the time. They have fear all the time. Now, does that fear f makes, freezes you in one spot? Does it paralyze you? Or does that fear propel you forward? That, that's how you have to look at it. So this is what they do. They all have fear, but they don't have doubt. There's a huge difference between fear and doubt. Fear is instinctive. Fear is instinctive, all right? That's something that's telling you, hey, listen, if you, if you don't have fear, whatever you're chasing, whatever your win is, whatever race you win, it's not big enough. It's, it, it, it's, not, it's not big enough, mm. all right? So we all, fear is instinctive, all right? Doubt is something we bring on ourselves. And a lot of times the doubt we bring on ourselves is manifested through what other people tell us, through their thoughts, through their ideas, which we start, which we start to believe. All right. And the people that win take other people's doubts and they use them for energy. They, they don't hold on to them. It's just like a workout. It's like an, it's like an empty calorie. It's like an empty calorie. It serves no purpose. You got to burn it off. Use it, use it for fuel and, and, get, and get rid of it. So everybody's going to have fear. You're supposed to have fear. But you cannot, ha you cannot have any doubt that this is going to do it. I'd rather have you fail at something and say, I went after it, than not than be frozen by doubt and never given that and never go after that opportunity. And that's what most people do from a health standpoint. All right. Yeah, when you put them, when you give them a nutrition plan, when you tell them these are the things that you have to do, there's some fear in you. There's some wow. I got to give up this. I got to do this. I got to here. I here by my sleeping habits here. This is what's got to happen from a physical standpoint, mental. And you're like, man, can I do all this? Can I do all this? Can I do all this? But the ones that be like, you know what? Just like you said when your podcast sitting in Missouri, you had no doubt. You had no doubt. So we're we're gonna we're going to we're going to do this, and that's that's what you did. So things that people think are negative, the greatest athletes in the world have the fear. 
they have the fear. Michael Jordan used to tell me all the time, every time I get out on the basketball court, yeah, there's a little bit of, there's a fear of me not playing at my highest level. But I have no doubt on what the outcome is going to be. You know, he always says, he goes, I never lost a game in my life. I just ran out of time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, <laughs> and also it's because no one is entitled to winning. Winning has no loyalty to you. It has no loyalty to me. It has no loyalty to anybody else. All right, what are, in the book, I say this. You can, you can hold on to winning briefly. Because once you hold on to it, it's already moving on to the next individual. It's always looking for the next person to conquer. It's always looking for its next individual. That's why a lot of people can't win over and over again. You could have easily said, yeah, I had the number one podcast. Right. But in order to have... It's a fight. Every single day. Winning has no loyalty. You can see... Listen, we can launch this thing and you look at your rankings, now you're at number three. <laughs> it, it, has, it, has no, it, has no, it has no loyalty to any of us and it's not supposed to. It's not supposed to because it wants you to fight. It wants you to fight for it. It wants you to acknowledge it. It wants to acknowledge, it wants to acknowledge you. It wants to, it wants to invite you to the celebration. But you got to earn the right to get to that celebration. Yeah. When you, you asked the question in the book, you said that you asked this to your, your top athletes. You asked this to, to lots of folks. To, to define winning in one word. And when you asked that question, I put the book down and I thought about it. And the first thing that popped up for me is fight. And then I was like, why that, why that word, Sean? Because for me, I'm, I'm real talk, I'm more gentle than you. Yes, no, to, I, I, right. You know, you grab people by the, you know, the jugular. <laughs> so I was just like, fight. But that's what I felt that it's, it is. That's the thread that I exist by with, yes. with the movement, with, with my mission. Yes. And, and, it's a fight. And, and it's a fight to change lives. It's a constant fight to change lives. You know, you're not talking about it, it's a, it, it, it's a, listen, I got to get in a filter, uh, uh, a fisticuff with somebody, or, you know, I got to get in a physical altercation. No, it's a fight. Me and Ronald change. McDonald. Yeah. Yes. You know? It's a fight to change life. So when I asked the question to those individuals, I said, well, give me what your, your definition of winning was. And, you know, everybody was, you know, I think it was going to be, oh, it's going to be glorious and it's, it's happiness and all this other stuff. These were the answers that came up most. It's nasty. It's hard. It's unpolished. It's unapologetic. And then Kobe came up and said, it's everything. It's everything. Everything. That's that's big. All right. That's big. Now think about that. How do you feel when you win? It's a, it's a feeling you can't describe. All right. How do you feel when Jordan wins? It's everything. It's everything. How do you feel when your wife wins? It's everything. All right. When your closest family members win. It's everything. When all the individuals that you help out. <laughs> it's everything. Yeah. It's, it's a feeling only winning can give you. It's a feeling only winning can give you. And once you feel that feeling, you need to feel it again right. and again and again. Because it's not permanent. It is. And you really brought that right front and center in yes. this book. It is, there's nothing, and that's one of the things, people, people think once they get to winning or once they won once, that they've, they're a winner. You know, just in my previous book, uh, Relentless, you know, I broke people down into three categories, coolers, closers, and cleaners, all right? I'm not going to discuss that. You guys can read the book on that one, but on this one, I have a different, I had a, like a different, and this wasn't in the book, but I came up with it, I came up with it afterwards. And I said, well, let's look at people. I look at people three ways from a winning aspect. There's people that compete. Everybody knows how to compete. We all know how to compete. All right? And those individuals, they just want to finish something. They just they want to compete 
just to finish. You know, you'd be like, hey, okay, this program, I'm going to put you on a nutrition program. It's supposed to be a lifestyle program. But it's just said, you know what? Give me 12 weeks. So they put you on a 12-week pro. You put them on a trade. They get, they get unbelievable results. They're like, ah, I finished this. And they go back to whatever they're doing. Then you have the individuals that win, but only one time. They only win once because that unforgiving race that it took to get that win, they're like, I can't do this again. I can't, I can't do this. I have that one win. And you know those individuals. <laughs> How old are you, Sean? 41. 41. You ever talk to your, anybody from high school still? Zero times. Neither do I. They don't even, <laughs> they don't even invite me. I'm like banned from the, from the reunion list. Like I'm the person that doesn't get the invite, doesn't get the calls, any of that stuff. But we all know those individuals that tell you about their wins back in high school. Because they won that one time. And then you have individuals that win at winning. Hmm. They win at winning. They're the ones that win over and over. And, and it doesn't always have to be in a support. It's in raising the kids. It's in their charity work. It could be in whatever it be. It could be that school teacher that every single year, no student is left behind. Every single year. No. It's those people that know how to win over and over and over again. Because if you constantly win over and over again, Think about all the different lives you can impact, different all the people that you set examples for. Not just in your athletic endeavor, but in life in general. Win, winning at winning. Win at winning. Man, that blew my mind. That's yeah. powerful. You know, this experience over the last year plus now, uh, a lot of folks were looking for an outlet they were looking for something to remind them of what's possible. But folks that win, it's just kind of, it's there already, it's already there. But people were demanding for the last dance to get released. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they, they sure were. That ESPN special, and it was amazing. And I saw you pop up there. I was like, that's my guy, that's my <laughs> guy. And you were sharing some of the juiciest, best stories. And it was a story where, and you could just, you tell the story because we, we all see it as like, you know, they're on the, the cusp of this championship run yet again. And Jordan runs into this, into this flu he just ca caught something yeah but the story's a little bit different yeah so I, i'll be the first one i just to get out there i ordered the pizza i did <laughs> order the pizza that was me i made the phone call yeah. I, it was it was it was the only pizza place that was open i didn't have any other 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 options there was literally no other but jordan requested something to eat yes there was no other restaurant open remember this was in park city before it was park city mm -hmm. all right before it became really park city so he goes man I, i'm i'm hungry Room service was closed. Everything was closed. We're like, okay, he's literally got to play tomorrow. And I'm like, I got to fuel this guy for people that don't know. You know, his me metabolic rate was extremely fast. So being from the nutrition side, I don't even have to explain that to you, how detrimental that could be to an athlete that's got to perform at the highest level the next, the next day. So we're scrambling. We're like, all right, listen. This, I, I, said, I said, I used to call, he, he's the one person I call boss. I was like, boss, this is all I can find. He goes, man, order the effing pizza. All right, I got it. So I ordered the pizza. Well, and people are like, like you know, well, why'd you, why'd you put his name on it? Listen, I know I'm not the brightest individual in the world, but I know better than to say, oh, the pizza, put, the, who's the order for? Yeah, Michael Jordan. All right. No, the pizza, was under, the pizza was under my name. All right. So they came in, they come into the desk. And they say, hey, so we, have a we have a delivery. Everybody knew where the Bulls were staying during that time. So they come, up, they, they come upstairs. And why the person at the desk let them upstairs, I don't know. Maybe because the, That's the, suspicious already. Yeah. Well, then maybe the, the room number was on there. They ring the doorbell. I open the door and there's five guys delivering one pizza. I'm like, man, Mm. Like, and you know you, you see them peeking around the corner trying to see who's in there we got the door just open just enough I grab the pizza you know tip them and you know how your instincts just tell you man something isn't right here yeah. something just isn't right and there was 
There was myself was in the room, a gentleman by the name of George, MJ, and a few of it, and few of it, few of his friends. They were just relaxing, and he was the only one that ate. No, nobody, nobody, nobody else touched touched the touched the pizza. And he had already told us. He goes, "Hey, the rest of you guys ate. This is all for me." So he eats a pizza, and then about three o'clock in the morning, I get a I get a call in the room. And I said, hey, man, I need you in MJ's room. So I go to MJ, and he's literally curled up in a ball. I'm like, oh, man, what the hell happened here? And there was no way it was the flu because he was perfectly fine when, we, when I left him like three hours ago. I was like, listen, we've all been hit by the flu, but it didn't hit him that. It didn't hit him that. Immediately I thought about it. I was like, check to anybody else. Is anybody else sick? Did anybody else eat the pizza? No. And then it just became known as the flu game. But you know, MJ, we got him. We got got him up enough. Called the team physician. Called the athletic trainers. Did everything that did everything that that we can. Got him. Got him to throw up whatever was in there. And he just he just said, "Listen, this win is extremely important to us." He goes, "I just he just just get me on my feet." He goes, "If you get me on my feet, I'll do the rest." I'll do the rest, and if you—that's one of the most iconic games in history that's ever happened. And you know, people do like you said. Tom says it calls it the flu game, but it was the first time in the Last Dance that he finally admitted it. It was a pizza when MJ finally came out and said, "Yeah, it was a pizza." I literally jumped out of my chair. I was like, "Yes, yes, <laughs> finally, <laughs> finally!" He admitted it. <laughs> he admitted it. But the thing that I thought was so amazing about that is the people, the one game no one talks about in Utah that describes winning and pressure to a T is game number six in his last uh, championship run. For the last 42 seconds of the game, they're down three points, 42 seconds left. Not a single other Bulls player touched the ball. Not one. Not one. He came down. He scored. Went back on defense. Stole the ball. Came down again. Scored again. Not one other mm. Bulls player touched the ball. Pressure is a privilege. Mm. All right. That means... You believe in yourself and somebody else believes in you. And you can't win unless you believe in yourself. You cannot, you cannot win at your health. You cannot win at business. You cannot win as a father, as a mother, as a son, as a daughter. If you expect somebody else to believe in you more than you believe in yourself. I always like to use the guests as an example. Right. When you decided to make this jump way back when, all those people around you did not believe in you. If you didn't believe in yourself, yeah. you'd still be sitting in Missouri. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's fa And even your wife had the courage enough to say, hey, listen, I didn't believe in you either. I didn't believe in you. And everybody else is looking for everybody else to believe in them. They want to believe in their dreams. They want them to believe in their wins. They got their own dreams. They got their own wins. It's your job to bring those things to life. It's your work. It's your dedication. It's your sacrifice. It's your language of winning means to you to get those wins over and over and over again. We tell our children, for example, that they have so much potential, right? We use this term with so many people. You got potential, but then we tend to, we tend to diminish it because of the lack of belief. And part of it can be, of course, like people don't want you to fall, they don't want you to suffer, they don't want you to have to go through what it takes to, to win. And it's kind of that protective mechanism, but you have to rise above all those things. And what the tool is, and this word is another dirty word, could be, but is a healthy sense of, of self-confidence or it can be termed as an ego. And there's like a battle against the ego, but I don't think people really understand the dimension of that. Your ego can be a tool that you utilize 
to drive you to where you want to be. Yes. So can you talk about the difference with confidence, you know, healthy self-confidence, a healthy self-perception, ego versus being conceited and arrogant and all these other terms. That Listen, if you, if you, if you, you produce results over and over again, you have a higher level of confidence. And if you have a higher level of confidence and your results are measurable, every individual I know that's produced measurable results has an ego. It's necessary. It's not a bad thing. Now, you have those other individuals, that's a healthy ego. You have those other individuals that have never accomplished anything, that love to talk. They love to di di diminish everybody else's success because of their lack of success or their faking success. They're faking, they're faking winning. All right, that's where, it's a bad, that's where it's a bad ego. That's where, if your results produce... You can define it as confidence, you can define it as ego, but those are the individuals that do this over and over again. It's healthy to have that. It's just like you when you talk about egos, I like to also talk about being selfish. Selfish gets a bad rap also. It's not selfish, it's the word itself that gets a bad rap. What, what is wrong with about taking care of yourself? What is wrong about creating time for yourself? You know, if we call it me time, everybody says, oh, that's a healthy thing, right? You know, that, but if you tell somebody, hey, I need an hour to myself, like, oh, you're so selfish. You're so, you're so, you're, okay. Why do you have to go and work out every single day? Because the more time I take for myself, the more confident I will be, the better my e the the better my ego will be able to help other individuals. The better I will be able to take care of everybody else around. If you if everything you did for self was considered selfish, you wouldn't work out, you wouldn't meditate, you wouldn't say no. Hmm. All right, you would eat what everybody puts puts in front puts in front of you. You wouldn't do the extra things that you need to stay to stay healthy. You need to you need to take in order to help everybody else, in order to bring to help other people with their wins, in order to let them see success, in order to for them to do what they want to do, you gotta do it yourself first. You gotta do it yourself. And there's nothing wrong with taking care of self. Kobe always used to say, man, he's so obsessed. How can you be number one? How can you have that number one health podcast out there if you weren't obsessed? And everybody says obsession is a bad obsession is a bad word. Okay, obsession isn't a, obsession isn't a bad word. It's how you use that obsession that makes it an advantage or disadvantage. It's how you use your ego and how you place your ego, whether it makes it a bad thing or 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 a good thing. You know, it's it's all perception on how people think. Like. When you move forward in your football career, Jordan, people are going to give you feedback and criticism. It's the exact same thing. It's how you hear it. Yeah. It's the exact same thing. With this and that, that self-confidence versus being arrogant, I think, especially if we're just looking at it in context of team sports, for example, it's also about the team. It's about it's always about yeah. the team. It's so for always, with this podcast, it's just, it's about the team. It's about the community, the family. It's always about the team. This is, yeah. listen. You can go out and score sixty points and lose every single game. All right. right. Yeah. You you can you can do that. All right. That's a bad ego. That's being selfish. We all have the ability to elevate ourselves. The challenge is. Can you elevate the people around you? Can you elevate the team around you? Can you elevate all the individuals that are listening to your podcast on a regular? That's the challenge. That's where that's where the wins really, really come come in. And that's the that's the difference. There, there it is. You can easily, you can motivate a lot of people. You can motivate a lot of people. But after motivation, motivation is entry level. 
It, it, it really is. It's like that sugar high you get from from eating a sweet. You know, you get this real high and you get this spike. Well, what happens once you hit that down thing? All right. You have to have the ability to elevate. You have to have the ability. Because once that motivation wears off, do you still have the ability to elevate? And then what you're doing with all the information that you're putting out, you're elevating the mindset of individuals. That's what you're doing. You're not more, you're not only motivating them, you're elevating because that's what winning requires you to do. It requires you to elevate your mindset because there's a lot of individuals that are out there that are motivated, that are motivated, but that's as far as it goes. That's as far as it goes. You know, people read a new book, they get motivated. New Year's comes around, they get motivated. Well, what happens? If that motivation doesn't turn into elevation, where you can light your own internal fire because winning is going to do everything it can possible to diminish your fire. That's what its job is. Mm-hmm. It's to make you, winning's job is not to see you finish. It's to make you stop. That's winning's job. Winning's job is for you not to win. Let me say that again. Winning's job is for, winning's job is not for you to win. That's why it's an unforgiving race. It's going to do everything possible for you not to get there, not only externally, but also internally. It's going to create doubt in your mind. It's going to make you second guess. It's going to turn your closest friends against you. It's going to turn your family members against you. It's going to turn you against you. Tim, why you got to tell the truth? <laughs> <laughs> so it's the only way I know how. You know, what? how do you get the biggest breakthroughs with your clients when they're honest with themselves? Yeah. You know, you, just, you, you told the story earlier about the individuals. You said, I've done everything. They laced three things. They're not being honest with yourself. The reason people don't want honesty is because honesty should lead to more action. But what honesty does, it leads to more emotions, which leads to less actions and less results. What's the first thing a person asks you in a relationship? Honesty. Hmm. Until you're honest with them. <laughs> <laughs> Until you're on- I'm that type of individual that don't ask me, do I look good in this? <laughs> If you, you already know the answer. If you're asking me, you, you want me to validate something that yeah. you already know? No, you don't look good in this. Mm-hmm. You don't, all right? Because if you did and you had the comp, you wouldn't, have to, you wouldn't have to ask me. And it's funny, people will ask questions they already know the answer for because they don't want you to tell them the truth. Uh, when you put a program together for an individual and you, you know, that, that, how many pages in that book? Uh, it's about 400. 400 pages. 400 pages of literature. You put it, people be a look at it and be like, yeah, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do this part here. I'll do here. I'll do here. I'll do, I'll do this. And then you finally tell them the truth. No, you need to do from pay, you need to do from cover to cover everything in between. And you tell them the truth and then be like, nah, you don't know what you're talking about. Hmm. Yeah. 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And that makes a person more emotional. And that's what winning wants you to do. It wants to make you more emotional because the more emotional you get, the more likely you're to quit. Yeah, that's powerful. It's why we're lacking that, um, like you just said, going from cover to cover is going to be able to elevate your mindset so that you don't become dependent upon that motivation, which motivation is a lot like a nice warm bath. And then, over time, it gets colder and colder and colder. That's and, a great way of yeah. putting it. The motivation is to go out and get the book. That's the motivation. The elevation is actually to do what's in the book. That's where the elevation com- that's the, uh, that's where the elevation comes in. The motivation is to go out and get the book. Yeah, you go on online and you order it from whatever bookstore, whatever. It is. Now you got these four hundred pages, and you're like, ah, I'll read it tomorrow. I'll read it the next day. I won't listen to it today. No, because you're, the motivation of the, the instant gratification of having it is gone. Now, in order to open the cover and read everything and do what's in there, that's where the elevation comes in. 
Every day there's a war going on in the battlefield of the mind here. Who's taking control of that battlefield? Are you taking control of that battlefield or is somebody else taking control of that battlefield? Listen, every single day we have to deal with anxiety. We have to deal with am I not am I am I good enough? We have to deal with what everybody else what everybody else is telling us. We have to deal with fear. We have to deal with failure. We have to deal with those things. If those things are constantly blowing up all the time, you're gonna lose lose the battle. You have to be able to know where those minefields are and you have to be able to maneuver those to maneuver in those things. And not always those things are negative. A lot of times people set you up for that battlefield with the, for that explosion in your mind. You don't need to work out today. Man, Sean, man, enjoy yourself, man. You know here. You know, have a couple of drinks, do this thing. So other people start to plant those things in your mind and they get control of it and they start to explode those things. They start to, they start to uh, disengage all those things. They start to blow things up. This is your most valuable real estate. This is your most valuable real estate. And for a lot of individuals, we don't even control this real estate. Somebody else is sitting in there in your real estate and they're not even paying rent. <laughs> <laughs> they're like you just get you squatting. just squatting. Yeah, squatting exactly. You just gave you just gave them that space. You got to be able to control that minefield that's going on in here. Your thoughts are not always your actions. All right, listen. If all my thoughts were my actions, well, we, we the Tim Grover serial killer story. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It, it, on that, TNT. <laughs> thank you. No. It, but, but we're not. We're not always, we don't have to act on all, our, we don't have to act on all of our emotions. We don't have to do those things. But you have to understand there's a battle that's going on in that mind every single day. Every time you sleep, every time you get up, all those things. Listen, I have this thing in there, and this is so important. All right, your mind has to be stronger than your feelings. Your mind has to be stronger than your feelings. Think about every poor decision that you've made in your life. It was a decision mostly made by your feelings. And you did that because you didn't want to hurt somebody. You didn't want to tell them the truth. And that's a battlefield that constantly goes on in the mind. That's why, I, listen, with me, you know what you're going to get. I want you to tell me the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. When's the best time to tell the truth? All the time. All the time. You know, I tell this thing a couple of uh, couple of years ago. I was on a uh, I was on a date with a young lady. We went out a couple of we went out a couple of times, and then I was like, "This isn't this isn't going to work." So we got we got together, and she goes, "Oh, please don't give me that line that it's not me, it's you." I said, "No, no, it's you." <laughs> no, it, 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 it's you. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Let's get this perfectly clear. It's not. It's not you. But the point of that story is: you tell the truth, you control the battlefield, and you, you control the battlefield in your mind. You let other people tell you the truth. Yeah, it isn't going to always lead to the right the the right emotion, but it's done. It's closure. You get you get to move on. Your mind has to be stronger than your feelings. Most people's nutrition, all right, when do they give up? Yeah, when things get a little challenging. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, when they start that, I don't feel, you know, I don't, yeah, okay. You put them on a healthy, a healthy plan to a better life, more fulfilling life, all right, yeah, there are going to be some feelings and emotions that are going to be like, hey, no, you know what? Hey, you know what? You don't need to sleep as what well, sleep as much. You don't need to work out. You don't need to work out today. You can go ahead and have that cookie. You can go ahead and and, and have have that ice cream. And your feelings start to say, yeah, it'll be okay. And your mind says, I I can't I can't no, no no no. Most people when they give up, you think about it in, in, in a workout. All right. You give up because you're mentally tired or are you physically tired? Most people, 
they just give up because their feelings are saying, this, I don't want to do this anymore. But you can still, then when your coach tells you, come on, push a little bit more, all of a sudden, hmm. you, you, find that, you find that extra gear. Yeah. Well, that's just showing you that if your minds are stronger than your feelings, how much more you can do. Yeah. I, part of that, what you said earlier, was just really jumped out at me. I mean, all of that is incredibly powerful. But when somebody, for example, is offering you, you know, like, hey, come on, it's okay. Like, have, you know, here's this, um, when, I, when I was really going hard, just the way that I grew up, I go to Taco Bell, I get the 10 pack of tacos, right? Of course. And I'm not sharing. Not right? no. So if somebody was like, here, have, you know, have your 10 pack, and they know that you are, for example, working on a new health protocol, you're really working to be better, and then that, but we think that it's them. But part of us is inviting that permission slip. Yes, it is. Right? And that's, yes. that's part of that battlefield of the mind. And you having the opportunity to overcome that moment. Right? And it's not even villainizing the thing. It's just having this higher, something that, that tastes even better. Something that, that win, that victory, that tastes so much better than these really chitty Taco Bell tacos. You can, get, you can, get, you can go to get that taste from those tacos from a lot of different places. There's only one way and only one place you can get that taste and feeling of winning, and that's by winning. Mm. Come on. That's it. You can't get it from anywhere else. You can't get it from Taco Bell. You can't get it from Del Taco. You can't get it from Del Frisco's. You can't get it from whatever Del there is out there. All right? You can't. That's the only place you can get winning from. Number one. So number one, winning wages war in the battlefield of your mind. Number one, here's another one. Number one, winning is the ultimate gamble on yourself. Confidence. Confidence. You got to gamble on yourself. Did you gamble on yourself? Absolutely. Had to. All right. Sean, did you gamble on yourself? All right. Did you gamble on yourself, young man? All right. Did you gamble on yourself? I gambled on myself. Why should, why are you waiting for somebody else to believe in you and to have more control? You got to gamble on yourself. You got to know that, hey, listen, when I gamble on myself, I have the utmost confidence. I know what the outcome is going to be. Put your health in your own hands. Put winning in your, in your own grasp. Don't wait for somebody else to don't wait for somebody else to hand it to you. But you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your abilities. Not only do you have to believe in them, you have to work in them. You have to excel in them. You have to understand them. If you're not willing to gamble on yourself, I'm not will, I'm not going to gamble on you. There's, there's no there's no way. I'm not I'm not going to gamble on you. I've never had to tell my athletes, "Listen, you got to want it. You got to work hard. You got to show up early. That's part of the gamble. They already know that. They already know that. You know, you hear this all the time, man. You know, showing up is half of the battle. No, showing up is none of the battle. <laughs> showing up is none of the battle. All right. How do you expect to win the battle if you don't show up? Mm. It's like, a, it's just, but pe people that say that, aren't willing to gamble on themselves. They're just not. Mm -hmm. We're just just touching on some of these tenets that are outlined in the book. I just want to hit on a couple more before I let you go because these are things that I want to hear more about myself as well. And this one really jumped out at me. And I think it's really relevant right now as well. Number one, winning is a test with no correct answers. No correct answers. There is no correct answers. The way you won is not the way I'm going to win. The way Jordan win is not going to way the Sherry won. No, we're all going to win. We're all going to have to figure it out ourselves. We're all going to have to figure it out ourselves. This is, goes back into, you know, what to think and how to think. This is this this is it. There is no correct answer. If there's a correct answer, it's all about what to think. What to think. All right. There is nobody told me when I was training MJ 
to be like, hey, listen, work out on game day. Nobody told me that. I didn't read that in a book. That sounds insane. Right. Just coming from the outside, yeah. which what you, you guys lifted on game days. Every game. Every single game. All right. Nobody told me, and people still do this now. You know, you would see MJ and Kobe, Dwayne, all these individuals play so hard. And it was like, man, sometimes I, I, I get, I get t you know, I get tired. And I wish I could recover a little bit more. And I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. And all, all the old adages out there when you, when you work out, you know, these, these are principles that you and I, when we were early in our careers, we may have even told other individuals because they told us to do this. When you're like really breathing hard and you're like, you know, you're like trying to gasp in for air, put your hands above your head so you can open up your lungs more. Well, I'm breathing pretty freaking hard. My lungs are open. I mean, I, I think they're pretty much open. How can I recover faster? I told MJ, I said, grab your shorts. How many pictures do you see of MJ grabbing his shorts? I said, just bend over and grab your shorts. I said, don't put your pants on your knees. Just grab your shorts. I said, allow you to recover. Because now what happens is you don't have the full weight of your body anymore. And I told Kobe the same thing. Kobe said, well, I, I, I said... He goes, but that, you know, he goes, that doesn't look good. I said, you want to look good or you want to win? Mm. Which one you want to do? So that's, that's what that's all about. That's literally what that's all about. Mm. Iconic. I'm going to ask you about one more because we've all heard this statement that life isn't a sprint. It's a marathon, <laughs> but winning is different. So mm -hmm. you have number one. Winning is not a marathon. It's a sprint with no finish line. Yes. All right. It is a marathon, but with a bunch of sprints in between. And there is no finish line because once you finish one win, the next line always starts. And the next one always starts. And the next one always starts. All right. You may win that day from a nutrition standpoint, if you're starting a health program or the mental exercise you give the individuals to create clarity or whatever, you've won that day. But the next day is a new start. And the next day, it's a new start. And it's a new finish. And it's a new finish. Every time you finish the podcast, every time you do a new podcast, you finished that podcast, you got to the win. But there's another one. And then there's another one. And then there's another one. There's always another one. And I have to, th and you have to think of it this way. All right. When you watch horses run in a race, they have no idea where the finish line is. They have, they have no idea where the finish line is. They just keep going. You literally have to, you literally have to slow, slow you literally have to slow them down. So in your mind, Understand that once you get to that one, once you end up finishing that thing, there's always another win that's wait. There's always another win that's waiting for you. There's always another one, and there's never a finish line. If there's a finish line, I go with exactly what Kobe said. All right, rest at the end, not in the middle. Hey, if you like this video, make sure to check out this video right here. I'm now 64. Uh, I quit running competitively when I was 30, and I, I shifted away from endurance and more toward speed and strength. But I was able to make that transition to the point where now I feel pretty competent as a strong, lean guy who performs pretty well in the gym, but also I sprint. I play ultimate frisbee with 20-somethings, and I can yeah. keep up with them.